we'll see when he explains boomer economics if he does cover i think the economic consequences to some of the boomerization of politics so far as i'm watching this he has not but and also i think he may have been underestimating the impact of state and local politics in the united states and the boomers decisions on those smaller levels of government that probably had just as much if not more economic consequences than the stuff on the federal level uh, a gridlocked government is not entirely true but he mentions that basically nothing has happened in congress uh, this is it's very boomer things that have happened you had three things that have really been a common thread since boomers took power in the early 80s you've had uh, taxes on the net fall without spending cuts to match them so why more deficit spending you've had increased size of social programs such as increased parts to medicare obamacare uh, generally you had a more positive trend towards social welfare but not as steep as europe but yeah you had it increases in the size of the state and the third thing you've had is increased regulations um, not mainly regulation some regulations are needed to prevent fraud and to keep the economy uh, moving at a level that has a high level of trust however a lot of regulations were created especially on the state and local level to be ladder poles or to raise the minimum requirements for competitors to enter in a business and therefore entrench established players from competition and this type of regulation ladder pulling regulation is the problem and it's by boomers basically saying hey i want to protect my little fiefdoms and my industries from younger upstarts from challenging us and so that's why a lot of the innovative and entrepreneurial capacity moved to information technology because there weren't enough established players in that sector especially in the internet sector that had enough political and lobbying power to pass ladder pulling regulations to keep out upstarts and that's why the growth of businesses and the growth of technological trends and economic development has been heavily skewed and probably overly skewed towards technology but let's see what he has to say about boomer economics the baby boomer economic policies and the direction their societies have taken are also indicative of their worldview. The boomers have pushed for their own self-interest and short-term growth at the expense of the long term. In their adolescence, quality of life and wages were the highest ever in world history. A major theme we'll see- I'm going to challenge that again with the 90s, but you can watch earlier video for why. Is the boomers don't understand that these conditions are not the normal state of the world, instead being contingent upon the historic conditions they were born with and the massive effort their ancestors put into getting there. And then the boomers continued to weaken those foundations. I don't think it's a surprise that the years when the boomers started to get more influence or the late 70s and early 80s also saw the stagnation of wages in America, from which they would never recover. The th it also happened to be the same time that globalization happened. And you're basically making the argument that globalization is solely a boomer phenomenon and that other generations given the same constraints would not have made those same choices theme over the final part of the 20th century and i will admit this is caused in part by much more complicated macroeconomic forces is that the boomers who were able to establish themselves during an era of high wages then went out crushing wages as much as possible as they started to have more capital and thus capital had more value than wages to them for their own economic self-interest. Starting with the Reagan revolution, America started mass importing immigrants by the millions, deindustrializing by pushing its own manufacturing abroad, started mechanizing and literally everything else someone could do to depreciate wages. Once yeah, a lot of the policies during the boomer era, whether it was increasing the size of the workforce through um, immigration or just having more of the domestic per, um, part, population participate in the global labor force, um, increasing the amount of people who go to college, which has the effect of decreasing wages and increasing competition for skilled labor. And... Um, globalization and the end of the cold war allowing a lot more 
people around the world to compete and then the ongoing of the internet and scalable technologies which create a more winner take all environment uh, all had a big impact on decreasing the demand for labor and increasing the concentration of wealth to the relative winners in society but if those same forces happened to any other generation of people i don't think it would have been any different i think the flaws of the boomer character i mentioned earlier in this video were through some of the policies that were like kicking the can down the road but with these type of economic changes I think they would have maybe happened a little bit slower, especially the the increase of the labor supply part of it domestically. But I still think it would have happened to a certain degree. If the baby boomers were established in the economy, they could undercut the younger Americans starting to work so as to make their capital go further. This has resulted in further economic stagnation and decrease in quality of life for younger Americans, which I talk about extensively in these other videos. The baby boomers saw the era of the cheapest capital or the most money to invest ever in world history. Thus, for the boomers, their capital, once they were able to accumulate it in the era of the highest wages ever, experienced massive returns. The yeah, that's true. It goes back to that old economy Steve meme that I was talking about earlier. Like millennials have a much lower net worth than they did in their parents. Their real wages are much lower than their parents were. Their home ownership rate is much lower than their parents were at the same age. And those are all concerning. And I've talked about that issue in the compensation theory video that I've done and several other videos that I have hinted at this. Uh, yeah, the ladder pulling I think is the main critique I have for the baby boomers that they wanted to protect their own. I think he may elaborate this over and I haven't mentioned it, is the whole NIMBY policy towards real estate and using the environmentalist movement as an excuse to prevent development in real estate to allow younger people to be able to afford to live in the nice suburbs of major metropolitan areas. And they wanted to do that to mainly, they would cite concerns about his, keeping the historical character or uh, environmental concerns when it was really just they wanted to keep their housing prices higher so that their house can be a retirement nest egg or their wealth effect and their net worth looks higher for psychological reasons. But the cost of this has resulted in um, dissatisfaction among younger generations. Many people having to move out of where they're from to cheaper locales and therefore disintegrating family ties, especially among extended family, which I, and I think it also impacts a lower birth rate because birth rates are highly correlated to the cost of a three bedroom house near a major metropolitan area. So yeah, I mean, and it's not just in real estate, it's just, that's just the most obvious example, but there's other regulatory professional barriers that prevent people from competing in certain industries making it more costly to hire younger workers and also making just the general cost of living, especially in real estate, less affordable than it would be without all these uh, boomer related ladder pulling policies. Thus, baby boomers with money to invest were able to make massive gains while younger generations were not able to accumulate the money in the first place due to lower wages and higher costs of living, thus further adding insult to injury. Something that's insane is that the baby boomers experienced the cheapest capital surge in history. This chart here is kind of the one that confirms the NIMBY problem. The other thing with the stock market is that, yeah, a lot of the boomers happened to hit escape velocity at the same time, and so because of that, they all put money into the market, which helped drive up asset prices because none of them were retiring yet. The people pulling out to retire was a much smaller generation than the boomers putting money into their 401ks. Uh, that, I think has something to do with it. Uh, the other side of things when it comes to uh, financial repression is that since the bull markets were so strong in the 80s and the 90s, Boomers kind of developed a cultural sense of entitlement that my stocks must always go up. And if stocks go down, there's something wrong and the government needs to do something about it. This hasn't really been said directly, but as you've seen like the actions of the Federal Reserve in the late 90s with LTCM and 
the pre-housing bubble driving rates as low as they did and then the ex over extended of quantitative easing and keeping interest rates at zero for what would be inappropriately too low especially if you compare it versus the taylor rule that rates stayed from zero from 08 all the way to late 2015 and that was mainly i think partially driven by boomers wanting to protect the value of their assets so they can retire and i saw like I had a bunch of reports during this time of saying that boomers didn't save enough for their retirement due to, to losing in 08 or due to just making certain life choices that didn't save enough or divorce or other reasons. And so as a result, they would need like abnormal double digit returns to be able to retire on time. And whether this was directly policy driven policy or in not I think it was psychologically impacting a lot of people subconsciously and so you saw a lot of policies that were designed to prop up valuations in both um, the equity market and the real estate market to protect the boomers retirement because let's just say they didn't do that and the valuations for stocks and housing stayed at GFC lows like in 08 and 09 then you would have had a whole cohort of people in their 60s and 70s who had no chance of retiring and if you think the problem of them not quitting their jobs now and retiring is a problem imagine if nobody none of them were able to afford to retire because of the financial markets it would have had even more millennials locked out of the labor force and that was the other thing because the boomers did not save enough during their younger years or they just have too high of an expectation for living standards in retirement or just in the case of some of my boomer family members who are small business owners, would just get bored in retirement and would rather continue to work on their companies or whatever projects that they're doing now. Uh, they don't want to leave the workforce for whether to do financial necessity or just or boredom or just personal passion. It could be one of the three reasons. And the result of that is that Millennials had to take lower paying jobs when they graduate during the GFC, or they're not getting promoted as fast as previous generations because the previous generations won't move out of the way. Like if the senior level executives, like I mentioned, the average CEO was 45 in 2004 and it was 59 in 2019. If they're not at the top level, people are not retiring, then you can't really have promotions and people moving up because the people on top are staying in their current positions. And so that has downstream effects that keeps the wage curve low. And now that the boomers are actually starting to hit retirement age, the, the median boomer now is in their late sixties. And a lot of them are finally starting to leave the labor force. That's why you're seeing partially why wages are rising the way they are and people are moving up faster like there's going to be a lot of catch up. I think that's the period we're probably going through right now. So that's another consequence. It may not be purely driven by policy, this decision for boomers not to retire, but the decision of boomers to extend their workforce um, lifespan has had some major implications from an economic perspective and a generational social balance perspective. History, but on top of that, also had the highest money printing in history. This massive amount of money printing largely ends up in the stock market, of which baby boomers are large stakeholders, and yet even on top of this, and the massive wealth of the world they grew up in, the world today is still positioned for a massive economic recession, inflation, and debt so- See my video on the reaction for this. It's actually, I have to thank What If Alt His for making that video, because my reaction to the we're going to have another Great Depression is what helped develop my audience, so thank you. Um, yeah, did I expect we would have a mild recession? Yeah, and that's what it seems like we had this year. Uh, do I think we're going to have the Great Depression within three years? And he made that video about a little over a year ago. So within two years now? Still probably not. But if you want to know more on my case for that, watch the video that I made back then. 
from high will crush countries, thus leaving the next generation with dire economic conditions. Modern monetary theory, or the dominant economic theory of the Western world today, which basically translates to we can print as much money as we want and will just magically result in more economic growth, is the perfect encapsulation of the boomer mindset. It's funny because MMT is mainly the most popular among millennials, for one, and didn't really gain any real traction until the Bernie Sanders presidential campaign in 2016. It was kind of a weird, obscure niche corner of economics and finance before that. Uh, so I think what really was the main boomer economic policy would have been the trickle-down economics and late period Keynesianism or neo-Keynesianism, like what happened post-08. I would not consider modern monetary theory to be a boomer ideology and it's the brief experiment we kind of went with that was trying that during the post pandemic stimulus packages and that resulted in the inflation that we're having now so a modern monetary theory is already on the decline and it it really was just a rationalization i go into this video is that i did in the past is like is macroeconomics political science and I'll, I'll put a link to that in the description where I go into why monitor MMT became popular when it did but yeah I would challenge what if all his to say that modern monetary theory was a boomer thing and it's a widely adopted popular policy because it's not it's very niche and it's very restricted to certain corners of progressive academia both in terms of among economists and among politicians in Washington. The mass rise in the cost of housing that has occurred in the Western world since the 80s has very disproportionately benefited baby boomers, who often bought these properties decades ago when they were much cheaper. Meanwhile, younger generations often scrounge for small amounts of terrible real estate since the properties are owned by boomers already. Likewise, boomer governments create insane regulations that make building expensive, thus resulting in further pushing up real estate prices, which benefits their group, which own the properties at the expense of the young who want to rent or buy them. Yeah, I covered that earlier in this video. Likewise, if you look at welfare programs due to their demographic structures, the baby boomers have already been able to take their old age welfare programs. Meanwhile, due to the baby boomers aging, these programs cannot function for younger generations since they will go bankrupt or become prohibitively expensive. I don't think it's a coincidence that in the year that- Yeah, that is true. There is some sustainability issues and I just would say anybody who's under 40 and planning their retirement shouldn't really count on social security if it had the most baby boomers in congress as a percentage 2008 saw a financial crisis caused by a lack of good boundaries in the banking industry thus resulting in corrupt dealings funded by government spending another example of this is with the environment in which baby boomers were unwilling to do anything to deal with carbon emissions even actively making nuclear energy a near impossible field the nuclear energy thing he's mentioning here is more due to just a societal paranoia towards Three Mile Island incident in 1979 and that later got expanded after Chernobyl and Fukushima. It's now starting to finally turn because nuclear power is like a clean alternative energy that would be needed if you really want to move to a post-fossil fuel world. But blaming the boomers on that is not really a fair criticism. There's people across all generations who are anti-nuclear power for the same irrational reason. Uh, and in terms of the environmental stuff, uh, the people maybe have correctly said that the damage from the economy from forcing everybody to go to 1960s level of energy consumption or lower is not worth it for keeping the climate down a certain number of degrees over the next 100 years maybe that's the, the the policymakers are trying to figure out what the appropriate risk reward calculation is for that. i'm not going to get into my thoughts on climate change here but to blame the boomers on the environment problems is also not really a valid criticism because a lot of environmental regulations such as the epa and the clean air and clean water act were passed with a primarily boomer electorate and recycling was 
pretty much primarily adopted as a boomer phenomenon to research or deal with, or making a carbon tax decades ago when it would have been much more politically tenable. This could result in outside environmental damage. Why would a carbon tax have been more politically tenable decades ago? There is even less evidence back then that would say that there's been real negative externalities from, from increased carbon production in the atmosphere. It would have been more politically challenging back then. More people now buy into the environmentalist argument today, and that's why it would be easier. But in fact, some countries have taken this so far, such as Germany, that they've risked their national security and their ability to heat them some of those this winter due to being a little bit too zeal in the speed of their adoption of environmentalist policies. So I really would challenge that one too and serious problems due to climate change down the road. I was once talking to my boomer father when I was watching a political speech. I was really young at the time, I think like ages six or seven, and I asked my father what the speech was about, and he said, it's about giving my generation money and yours will pay for it. Which I replied, that's not fair. I never voted on this. To which he replied, that's the point. This feels- Yeah, that's quite true. The question is, I wonder if previous generations had a similar attitude when all the New Deal was passed, and- do you think any of the people, the boomers, had any say of enacting Social Security in the first place? No. Or Medicare was passed in the mid-1960s before most boomers even turned 18. So you can make that same argument. But yeah, in general, the boomers, I think, have accelerated and taken on the burden of being the generation who has most taken from the now at the expense of the future. So I think he's right on that. Is however I don't think it's a uniquely boomer thing, but I think the boomers were the ones who were the who took with it the most and ran with it. It was like boomer economics in a nutshell. This video might come across like I'm jealous of the boomers and I just talk about all their blessings which did not pass on to the future generations. And I am, if I'm being perfectly honest. But on top of that, I do think there is a legitimate criticism that the boomers inherited such a good hand in almost every category, almost none of which they passed on to future generations. I, I mean, I, they had, it was a lot easier again, the old economy Steve meme. It was a lot easier if everyone had a more middle class level ambition as a boomer, especially in the US and Europe, to have a comfortable life than today. I mean, I think that if for those who are exceptionally ambitious or bright or entrepreneurial minded, the lack of gatekeepers and relatively less barriers to entry or technology, making a lot of previously higher barriers to entry on a compliance front, easier to do, actually opens up a lot more opportunities. So yeah, I think it's a more winner take all, you gotta really go for and hustle type of world now than it was back then. And then for those with more modest ambitions, this is terrible. But I'm not really jealous of the boomers. I mean, it would have made my career a little bit easier, honestly, if I was as a finance professional, if I was born in Gen X, because I would have graduated from college right when the 1990s boom started without the hangover of 2008 and I could have built a career off of the tech boom and a crack record and all of that. Yeah, that I mean, it, but at the same time, the level of economic and personal freedom that somebody can pursue today or being born when I was born or later is off the charts. One. And the information, the knowledge that I may have lacked, maybe not myself, because the internet was pretty ubiquitous by the time I graduated from college, but people born boomers and Gen X's lacked, could find a lot of it and skip a lot of the follies and issues that are delayed. And also to this generation being a lot less socially um, developed than previous generations, having a slight amount of social skills is a much bigger edge. Like soft skills are more valuable now than they've ever been because of the lack of socialization that has happened over the last 10 to 15 years due to the digitization of the economy. So every generation has its different problems. I'd say like, again, for people with more modest ambitions or people who just want to like have a more defined course and not have to really 
or worry about or experience economic volatility, it's a lot easier for the boomers and for that kind of environment. But every generation, there's still plenty of opportunities today. And I wouldn't trade being born the year I was for being 10 or 15 or 20 years older. One thing I would blame the boomers is that they have taught and maybe through their parenting style to a certain degree and the way they were as teachers, they've taught a lot of people the whole like either everybody gets a trophy on one end or the system is so stacked against you that there's no point in trying on the other end. And you've created a lot of people who have a lack of agency or at least have a feel perceived lack of agency. Um, or to the other, the third extreme is that like everything is your fault no matter what, which is not really a terrible idea to live, but I can see how that could cause a young person to have some sort of emotional distress. And so, yeah, a lot of this, ex, ex, this decadent ways of raising the next generation, I think is what, and a lot of the mental self-limiting beliefs that have been a derivative of that actually can be blamed on the boomers. Overall, um, I think he makes some valid points, but I also generally think that he tries to put too much into a fixed narrative to repeat similar generational cycles as seen in like in books such as The Fourth Turning with discounting other variables or what would the millennials have done in the same situation. And I also think that the 1990s were a much more prosperous time than the 50s. So yeah, I think there were some economic consequences to the social changes in the 60s and 70s created by the boomers. But a lot of those social generations can't be blamed on all boomers, but just those who were born into a certain level of privilege and had a relatively loose parenting style of their parents, which was not common. It's actually far more common for millennials to have the progressive parenting than the boomers themselves. And then as they got older, they did participate in ladder pulling, which is a serious problem that we're living with the consequences of today. So it's not like the boomers don't deserve some of the bad reputation they've got because the ladder pulling and a lot of their view of spending for the now and discounting the future, we're now starting to pay for that finally in the long term. But overall, I think that I think his, his his video is fitting too much into a path. I agree with a lot of it. I just come from it from a different perspective. If, if, if what if all his ever watches, I'd love to have a further conversation on this. And if you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you like this content, feel free to like and subscribe. We're almost at a thousand subscribers. And when we do that, we're going to do a special video and complete our book giveaway. So stay tuned for that and have a happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for watching.